point is that we got to go up higher. We got to get above that yapping soul and cast it down. Once you do, you've overcome the accuser of the brethren. But he does come. And the thing is, the accuser of the brethren is going to be your death. And I don't mean your physical, but you will die with the accuser of the brethren because when you die in this world, you will go into the spiritual world. That's really big, y'all. We're spiritual beings. We are called to be in the world, but not of the world. That means that we do not get our provision in this world. We do not look for anything. This is the matrix. Our spirits, we're spiritual beings. We're supposed to live in the spiritual realm. That's where all the answers are. This world came out of that world. This world's going to be destroyed. The spiritual world is what's going to remain. So if you are in Christ totally, feet, toes, heart, everything, then let the earthquakes come. Right? So the point is, is that you've got to overcome in order to get there, though, because you've got to die to your soul. You've got to die to these things bothering you. And we're going to talk about that a little bit more. Because it's time for the Christ to arise. In Matthew 8, 23 through 27, God brought this back up to me. We taught on it about three or four months ago. But anyway, he brought it back up to me. In verse 23, when he got into the boat, when Jesus got in the boat, his disciples followed him. And I want to say, I forgot a verse before this. He said, let us go to the other side. So he prophesied that he was going to the other side. Okay? But anyway, he got in the boat and his disciples followed him. And behold, there arose a great storm. Now that word storm is animos. Okay? I'll come back to it. On the sea so that the boat was being covered with the waves. But Jesus himself was asleep. Save us, Lord. We're perishing, he said to them. Why are you afraid, you men of little faith? Then he got up and he rebuked the winds and the sea, and it became perfectly calm. The men were amazed and said, what kind of man is this that even the winds and the sea obey him? The first time I got this word, my father's business had just crumbled. And my husband's job was in that, so he lost his job. And I had already been experiencing not having a lot of clients at that time, and I was spending time at home. Remember all that? I've told you about it. And so I remember Jesus saying to me, I'm asleep in your boat. And the wind and the waves and the storm is all coming on you. He says, now you can wake me up. He said, but if you do, I'm going to rebuke you for not having any faith. Because you have peace inside of you. that You've been digging and digging in my wells. You've got peace inside of you to release over your own storm. But if you lean to me, and you wake me up, I'm going to rebuke you for not having any faith. I was like, mm, I'm scared, Lord. But I walked through it, and I made it. Now, last night, when he brought this up to me, he said, you're not the disciples anymore. See, before I was learning how he did it, now I'm asleep on the boat. And you can be too. But you have to overcome your soul. You can't be ruled by your emotions and your thoughts. And if you're not, Jesus calls you, well, the Lord calls you perfect. Tell Elias, complete, mature man. Are you still going to be in this world? Of course. But you're perfect in the spiritual realm, one with God. Okay? So, um, go to the next one. The accuser of the brethren must be cast out first before our deliverance. The accuser is the word kategoros, and it's two words. Kata means against, intense opposition, and they overcame him. That's the accuser. He is intense opposition. I'm telling you, it's not a picnic. When you encounter him, it's somebody that is speaking. He's speaking through. They've got a mouth. They irritate the living snot out of you. Which is good. You don't need that in you. But it's just like, yap, 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 yap. And it's just, I mean, they constantly, and he also, in the spiritual realm, is constantly telling you what you're doing and where you're going is the wrong way. 
and look at all those people that you're leading and you're going to be in big trouble because you're leading those people astray. And once you get over that, it is wonderful. But you're going to have to fight him. And he's cast down by the word of your testimony. Now let's look at that. Logos is the word maturia. And it means record, report, witness, truth. I was writing a song this week, and God said, there can be no peace without truth. There can be no peace. Remember soul peace? It's just a fake peace. There can be no peace without truth. Today, we have peace, but right is wrong, and wrong is right. It can't last. That's not a lasting peace. It's going to be shaken, right? So, when I bring up this word animos, animos is the word that's used for the storms in the New Testament. Animos is those storms that come up and they are like spiritual agitations. What's going on is spiritual forces are producing strong agitations in the soul realm. They were so scared. They saw the waves. They heard the wind. All of that was their soul. And Jesus is asleep. Because he's not affected by the soul. That's where we want to go. We want to be in the soul realm. The place where we can overcome the accuser. Where it doesn't bother us. His mouth. His noise. I'm going to kill you. Oh well, I'm dead already. <laughs> And you can have perfect peace when you get there. But it's a battle. I'm telling you, it's a battle. And the way you do it is the little people around you. As you overcome the little fights, then you go on to the bigger ones. You're on the track right now. It's just you've got to realize what's going on. All these people that are around you individually, they're there to train you. Um, may I share? M uh, the guy that he's been trying to win to the Lord, who's the Satan worshiper, um, he was going at him like a battle. You know, I'm going to win your soul, you know, kind of thing. And that was just clashing heads, and that's what the devil wanted. But he bent down, and he picked him up. And now he's all confused. And now he's starting to come. He's starting to come, and he's realizing that the reason why he had that battle was because it was revealing there was something still in him. You see? These battles that we're facing, our individual battles, they reveal what's still inside of us. If that mouth still bothers you, there's still something in here. If whatever it is, whatever your personal battles you're going through you've got to overcome them and when you overcome them you're ready for the next one and he realizes that that was just to make him stronger to realize okay I got to get this out now let's do battle again and when I do it this time I'm going to have more authority because I've gotten rid of that that spirit that was causing me to battle with you now I'm ready for you you see it's just to show us What's inside of us? So there was fear inside of their soul as well as what was going on in the world. See? So what was going on was well, the Gergeshite spirits were trying to rob the disciples of their peace of mind. Because Gergeshite winds of false teaching agitate the weak soul. That's what we're getting ready to experience because we don't have truth in this world. The agitations of the soul are starting to start, start up. They're starting to blow. They're starting to really come big time. Because knowing truth gives us the power to overcome. If you don't know truth, if you believe lies, you're going to be weak and vulnerable and defeated. Knowing truth, this is what happened to me in, in my dream. I don't know if, I know it's in Ecclesiastes. I just can't find it. But God was talking to me while I was listening to the word. And he was, I, don't, I cannot find it. But it was saying, he was saying to me that the wisdom is what's helping you have power to overcome the devil. Applying this wisdom is giving you the ability to overcome. 
And so when you have wisdom, that's true, that have been fed these lies, and they're believing those as truth, they're going to be eaten alive. And that's what's coming. That animus is coming to shake your peace of mind. But as we see, Jesus had so much peace of mind that he was able to sleep in the storm because peace was inside of him, and he released it into the atmosphere. And Jesus, at that time, he cast down the mouth. He said, shut up. Shut up. That's what rebuke means. <laughs> shut up, wind. Shut up, storm. Because he had peace. And so that is what it means to overcome him by the word of your testimony. Where you know you know truth. And you're applying it. You're walking with it. Okay? And the second is because of his willingness to give his will, his blood. And because three, because he was willing to lay down his life. So I want you to think about that when we're looking at what's, what's happening. Because Moses has to overcome as he's going to Pharaoh. It's the same. The Old Testament is the same as the New Testament. It's the same type and shadows and patterns. But you're his kid, and he will come down. He will remember his covenant with you. Going on with Psalm 18, when it talks about, I called to him. He's my rock. He's my fortress. He's my deliverer. I called to him. Look what it says. Verse 7. Then the earth shook and quaked, and the foundations of the mountains were trembling and were shaken because he was angry. Then... Because my kid called to me, not to Pharaoh. Then I came down. And you can go on and read the rest of it. Uh, Psalm 18, 16 through 24. Because I'm righteous. Because I'm righteous. That's when he's going to come. Now, if you get yourself in trouble because you're unrighteous, that's your own battle. <laughs> but because you're righteous, because of that blood. Remember, Abel was righteous. And he was killed. As an as a innocent, innocent witness, an innocent testimony. And his blood cried from the ground and released apostolic judgments against Cain. Because he was righteous. So look what it says. It says, um, according to the cleanness of my hands, he has recompensed me. For I have kept the ways of the Lord and have not wickedly departed from my God. For all his ordinances were before me, and I did not put away his statutes from me. I was also blameless with him, and I kept myself from my iniquity. Therefore the Lord has recompensed me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness, love it, of my hands in his eyes. Doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. In his eyes, I am perfect. I've got clean hands and a pure heart. He calls me perfect. Go ahead. Uh, psalm, the same psalm, but 25 through 32. With the kind, you show yourself kind. With the blameless, you show yourself blameless. And with the pure, you show yourself pure. And with the crooked, you show yourself astute. So if you're going to give God half of you, you're going to expect to get half back. But if you're blameless, God is going to fight for you. If you're being attacked because he's asked you to lay your life down to rescue somebody's God potential, he is going to fight for you. That's the way it works. Um, pulling out um, verse 36. You enlarge my steps under me and my feet have not slipped. Now, Jesus hasn't done it all for me to relax. Because look what it says in 37. I pursued my enemies and overtook them. So when he came down, he, he, he paved the way for me to pursue my enemies and overtake them. Does it say that he took care of everything and I just went, great, thank you, Jesus? Why do people think that? The children of Israel, when they went into the promised land, the ites weren't dead just waiting for them to come in and go, woohoo, they're dead. They had to fight him. He, he gave them deliverance. He promised them deliverance. He promised them victory. But they still had to fight him. 
enemies and overtake them. And I did not turn back until they were consumed. I shattered them so that they were not able to rise. And they fell under my feet, which is where the...